Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, as you might know, recently my friend Bob Marshall of Riverside, California, placed a visit with us for a few days, and he brought his son Robert with him. And I had the opportunity to interview Robert Marshall. He's a fantastic young man and is involved in his father's typewriter repair and sales business. So I thought you might want to like to enjoy this interview of Robert Marshall. Stay tuned. Well, Robert, welcome to the channel. Thank you for and, welcoming me. Yes, and welcome to New Mexico, to Albuquerque, to our house. Well, so you are your dad's quality assurance control person, right, in his yes. typewriter business? Yep, I like to help out a little bit, you know, um, you know, do some sweeping, uh, you know, maybe test out a typewriter or two. I think that's real important because <clears throat> a lot of typewriter guys are running a single person operation and they don't really have the time they can't afford to to spend an hour typing on a machine right yeah, yeah. um yeah it's true you know uh they can type but a lot of times they might run out of something to think about or they just don't have time like you said right so that's where it comes in handy to have a person like you that can spend the time to test out a machine and you have a probably a particular talent at being able to be really picky about finding problems in machines, right? Like this doesn't feel right. You, you kind of have a, you know, you're, you're kind of like the typewriter whisperer, I guess, in the sense that you are sensitive to them, right? To how yeah. they feel. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You were, last night he was, he was writing on my little Groma Calibri. And, and those are like never perfect machines because there's like intrinsic compromises to make a, a typewriter that small. But you, you had some things to say about the touch wasn't quite, a little harsh. Yeah. Yeah. But that's uh, very common with the small machines. Yeah. Uh, your Roman Calibri, it's you know, you know, yeah. probably about <laughs> yeah. a little shorter than this, but it's a little longer, right? Yeah. The uh, the Skyrider that is about the same, right? right. Uh, you have to press really hard on it yeah. uh, compared to something like uh, Smith Corona over here. Yeah. But yeah, it, so, it is what it is. So yeah, so you've seen a lot and used a lot of different typewriters due to the advantage of your dad being out of business, right? Yes. So, and what's your personal typewriter at home that you use? Um, I use a, uh, a quiet writer. Oh, yeah, those are good machines. So, we have in front of you this electric Smith Corona made Singer and it has with a manual carriage return. And so, we were talking here in this video about type bar electrics and how easy they are to use what do you what is your feelings about that um, I I think they are very easy to use right they have a, a electric assist on typing and um, you know everything up here with the carriage is manual yeah even the shifting is powered yes you know and and all that so yeah so if you don't have the, the hand strength to operate a manual typewriter properly like to give enough force on the keys what do you think? Those are a good beginner's typewriter? I mean, yeah, I'd say it's a good beginner typewriter. Um, you know, you could build up to maybe like a Skyrider or, you know, mm -hmm. your Calibri. Yep. Going through the motions of all that and just getting your technique good. So if you, if you took a friend from school who never used a typewriter, do you think you could sit him down at this one and he would do pretty well right off the bat? Yeah. Yeah? I could do that. Yeah, because that what the, the key travel is about the same as a an older desktop computer keyboard. Yeah, right. right? It is. It's not like a laptop keyboard, but it's like a desktop keyboard, right? In terms of like maybe five millimeters of key travel. You know, these two machines are made by the same manufacturer, a, a decade or so apart. The five series electric has this kind of opening between the keys, right? Where you can kind of you could almost imagine getting your little finger down in between the keys or something, but this singer has more of this, what they call a bezel, or this plastic thing with holes in it for the keys, right? Do you like that better? Do you, like it's sealed up kind of like? It doesn't distract you with the, the mechanism underneath, or does it matter? Um, in my opinion, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if you're prone to missing the yeah. key, maybe you're not used to the typewriter, you're not used to uh, touch typing, you could definitely miss it, like you said, go in between and right. jam up the machine. Right. But this, it uh, troubleshoots that. Oh, yes, almost. yeah. 
I don't know if that's something with this this way these bezels are, but you know, like you don't like this one. You see the type bars, you see the mechanism underneath the keys, and this one you don't. This is much more like sealed up look, right? Yeah, it kind of looks uh, more futuristic. But touching to what you said with uh, distractions, I yeah. mean, I think it's kind of cool to see the arm come yeah. up and hit the page. But obviously, you know, we're doing it for fun. Right. Uh, professional, right? They need to yeah. make money. So. Right. Yeah. And, and we're in a different era, right, of typing. Yeah. Then back in the day when you had to do this for a living, I mean, very fast and very accurate, no errors and all that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, so do you see um, if you had to, like, narrow down your typewriting to like one machine, would it be a manual or do you think it would be like a type or electric? It would probably be a manual, yeah, yeah. Uh, less to deal with, right. um, easier to fix. Yeah. I'm not that good at uh, fixing anything electric yet, yeah, yeah. but um, you know, you can carry it around. You don't need a yeah. power source. That's right. Those type of uh, secondary problems yep. when it comes to a manual like this one or right. uh, that Smith Corona Galaxy over there. Yeah, and also these Type Bar Electrics are a little loud. And if you're writing at home late at night and there's other people in the house, yeah. they can get a little loud. Of course, even one of these is probably not exactly quiet, especially with a hard platen. But yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. most typewriters aren't quiet per se, no. but they're, uh, you know, some are quiet. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a place for these, and it's at least it's exciting that to see that some people like to use them. Yes. Because in the early days of the typewriter revival, people kind of relegated electrics to the trash bin more. They weren't really appreciated, but yeah. I mean, they all have their purposes. Um, it comes down to what you like, right? Like my dad said, build a relationship with your machine. Wow, I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> Thank you very much, Robert. I appreciate you coming by. Thank you very much, you Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, very much for that fine interview. And look forward for one more Bob Marshall video coming up in the next few days. In the meantime, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.